Welcome to the fifth of six rounds of the 2019 Blancpain GT World Challenge Asia. We're for the first time at the Career International Circuit, last used by Formula One in 2013. A fabulous stretch of racing tarmac, but the overlying theme, it's unbelievably hot. Two one-hour races, one today and one tomorrow. Each driver does around half an hour of racing. The pit window opens after 25 minutes of the, of the 60 minutes available and closes 10 minutes later. It's MG Choi, also Roloff Bruins, very, very uh, excited to be here on home ground in Korea, and he's down on the grid with our man, Steve Dawson. Yes, Bruce, sitting comfortably with our pole sitters. The ideal scenario, isn't it? Driving in your home country and in pole position. Yeah, it's a fantastic moment. I mean, we couldn't have picked a better moment to score Indigo Racing's first pole position into uh, Blancpain World Challenge Asia. You had, a, you had a bit of trouble with track limits in qualifying. You and your teammate went off three times. Have you got that sorted out? Well, when you want to be quick, you need to go on the limit. Sometimes you go a bit over, but that happens. Uh, we still got a first row and a second row for both races, so I'm very happy still with it. Very best of luck today. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. And I'm sure being the perfectionist, Roloff will point out that it was his teammate, Manuel Metzger, who was uh, running wide, not Roloff, who kept it between the white lines. Safety car is pulled off to the side. It's a long hold, but it's a very short start-finish straight. Will it be Roloff Bruins in the Mercedes on the right-hand side of your screen, leading into the first corner? Or will it be Tathan Theoretical? Thier Looks so Tathan Theoretical, who was really feisty on the grid, about maybe taking a move into the opening corner. He's got his nose in front, but he's on the outside line, so quite rightfully, he has to yield position near contact behind with uh, Ryan Chen got a little bit sideways into triple line. Audi, looks so everyone's got around turn one, but really the passing is going to come up here into turn three. It's a, it's a rising straight, it's wide, it's very, very long indeed. The Hub Auto Corsa Ferrari getting quite serious as well. Started from fifth on the grid, looks so it's up into fourth. MG Choi's got it all covered on the inside. That's where you want to be into a hairpin. That and Ferrari's looking very, very busy indeed. But Wyan Chen holding on to third place in behind. We've got Anthony Liu, the leading Pro-Am runner. He's been pushed back from fourth to fifth, but all very tidy indeed. Well done, everyone involved. But now what's happened? Suddenly, Sathin Thirical made the move after the exit of turn three, giving a little bit of a push from MG Choi. Sakamoto's making his way forward in the Ferrari. Indigo Racing Mercedes had to come off the power a little bit there, got on the grass and first became second and has now become third. That's not what the local hero wants. He's being pushed very wide indeed by Wyan Chen. Steve Dawson's made it back here from the green. I could possibly give him a few seconds to cool down, but a sharp, fabulous start. It's a sweaty affair down there. These, these athletes are going to struggle in these cars for the time that they're on the track because it's very hot and even more humid than during qualifying. Well, that really is something. It was horrendous. But yeah, yeah, Sakamoto, fifth on the grid. He's still fifth on our time charts. We're only just getting up to the first timing interval. And he's already up into second place, really pushing Tanart, Safi and Thirical. Uh, Tanart has a six-point championship lead, but with 25 points for win and 18 for second, all it needs is for those positions to be exchanged with MG Choi in that third-place Mercedes going in front. And it could be as close to all square as possible before we get to Sunday's race. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We have 50-something minutes in this race remaining. Anthony Liu fell down to what was it? We saw him down among the GT4 runners. He's worked his way. He started fourth, down to about 23rd position, 22nd position. He's up to 12th, just banged in the far fastest first stretch of anyone. He was lapping faster than everybody but the top uh, four or five cars last time around. And he's got traffic, so he's a busy, busy oh, driver down there. Really well, though, isn't he? I say. Bruins has registered the quickest time in sector two, so it'll be interesting to see what he does as he comes through the final sector. Currently in third, then four tenths behind Sakamoto in second. And just had a look at the GT4 battle. Suddenly, Sonaka Jakuchu has got an advantage. Frank Yu seems to have fallen back into the grasp of uh, Brian Lee and Keo Chang. Oh, and we've got a problem for 88. Well, you can see there's been front body contact, and that was a man that you've cursed. You spoke to him on the bridge, Jeffrey Lee. <laughs> This is the car that's starting to pole for tomorrow, but unfortunately, there has been contact. Last time around, he was very close to... Well, he wasn't. He's dropped an awful lot of time. I don't know who he might have hit. He was the next car up the road was about a dozen seconds clear, unless he's contacted the back of the Ferrari of uh, David Chipto Toro. But for for Jeffrey Lee in the craft of Bamboo Racing 88 Mercedes, it's a limp around the pits. Yeah, it'd be lucky if he can get to the pits without puncturing his front left. He may have punctured it already, actually. He, well, he may well have done it. He may have left enough debris to give a puncture to someone else. And the person on the move now is Roloff Bruins. You've seen him. He was sort of close to the tail of the Ferrari of Yuya Sakamoto, but he just started really taking a serious look towards the end of the lap. 
didn't quite make it stick, but uh, that intent was clear for all to see. Ball has got alongside. First four still sitting comfortably clear of Ware on Tan and Ware on Tan. Fastest lap again last time around. There's that battle. Eighth, ninth, tenth. Nielsen, Biron, Bakhti, and Au, and in behind Daniel. Sorry, Alex. Au is Anthony Liu just catching all of them very quickly. The flash of his Porsche at the bottom of the image. Yeah, it's a good battle this for eighth with Christina in front. It's going to be broken up with Anthony Liu coming through. He's way quicker than they are. Have to move his way through. So we can get a word with Christina earlier on on the group. See if we can perhaps do that tomorrow. Another race for you on the Sunday. Two races this weekend before we head into our final weekend. Battles all the way down the field. 13, Jing Su Sun has moved ahead of 88, Jeffrey Lee. Both had their problems. Jing Su Sun, the judge to have got the start wrong. He served the drive through penalty. And of course, the big problem for the 88 Mercedes, a car that has been a race winner this year, was that front body contact for Jeffrey Lee. Staying between the. Uh, oh, no, he's going to be off the circuit there. That was just simply a mistake rather than trying to gain an advantage. Hit the curb on the inside, spat the car to the outside. So to, proving to be a little bit of a messy race, and he's already had the drive through penalty, which is why he's second in the AM class, with Andrew McPherson leading the way in the AMAC Motorsport Lamborghini. It's an all Lamborghini battle in the GT3 AM class, and uh, this Thai racer is just getting a little bit wrong today, just being a little bit caught out. Jingsu Sun has come in to make his second pit visit, but he's been in already. And that's for a drive through penalty, so he's just trying to hand over at the earliest opportunity to Frankie Chen Kong Fu and see where they can go from there. And then round goes Christina Nielsen. It was getting close. Two positions, three position lost by the Dane. And the Pity Viren Bakhti in behind has also lost two positions. So up goes Anthony Liu, started the lap 11th. He's up to eight. It's been a good return for him, and that was an assist. If you will. Let's take a look. Christina Nielsen minding her own business. Pity Beer and Bakhti coming up the inside, up the inside, up the inside. Christina turns into the corner as she had to, nowhere else to go. So I'm afraid it was the tie racer who uh, looked for a bit of complicity and uh, didn't get any at all. Nielsen trying to pick up the pace, coming in, quite possibly got a puncture. First two in the championship on the road in that same order. 1.2 seconds between them. Last time around, 13 laps on the board. It's Tanan Safi and Thirikul who part way around the opening lap made that move from second to go past the pole starting Indigo Racing Mercedes. And uh, he is uh, maybe coming in this time around. Here comes the trouble 55 Mercedes that's running at the very tail of the field. Melvin Moe has just taken that over, going onto the track all over again. Emmanuel Metzger has rolled the dice early. Oh, he's lost. Oh, no, big, big loss out there for Philippe Ampre. The lead has been taken from him. Oh dear, Richard Wee had nowhere else to go and unfortunately for Hamprecht he guessed the wrong way, thought there was going to be a gap on the inside, it looks like it was, and suddenly closed, the charging Manuel Metzger has gone ahead of Philip Hamprecht, now let's see, we've got 17 and three quarter minutes left, here's a replay, look it's sort of okay as long as the Mercedes keeps going to the, no it's not gone enough and instead of going for contact, we'll be presented with contact, Philip Hamprecht had to come off the power, means if they finish as they are the championship battle will be squeezed right down so that all the hard work by Tanat Sati and Thirikul to go from second to first on the opening lap and lead all the way is being undone Hamprecht lost momentum lost position lost the lead catching both of them Marcus Gomez as well in third place the Hubble to course of Ferrari pressing on so the top three cars in the championship the top three cars in the race Shane van Gisbergen up to ninth place overall. Of course, Frederick Schandorf had to come in and serve that drive-through penalties for speeding in the pit lane, or his car speeding in the pit lane. That means van Gisbergen is, uh, well, let's see where he can go. 9.18, Porsche is the next car up the track in eighth place overall. Running really all on its own, leading the GT3 AM class. Looking very good for Ben Porter, who had such a strong run at Fuji Speedway. They mixed it with the top guns at the front end of the field. Certainly did not look out of place. How well is he lapping at the moment? Two minutes 13 is the fastest car. Two minutes, uh, we've had some cars in the two minutes eights. In fact, the last. Just looking for Portis. And, yeah, very close that car's got pace. Now. So, Manuel Metzger, 2.4 seconds. The good, there's a battle we'll get the 
918 Porsche Alexander Imperatori. Have to look a bit further down the track. Here comes the 888 racing Mercedes. As you can see, really quite a gap between them. Six and nearly seven seconds. He's got past the GT4 traffic though. Richard Wee in the background. How far behind him now? Sergio Mantanzo. Yeah, has gone out a bit. He gained seven tenths of a second. It's 2.1 seconds. The advantage for the Racing. He will get, they will take a championship lead off. Joy will take a championship lead of one point over the pairing of Philip Hamprecht and Tanart Sati and Thirikul. Of course, Manuel Metzger has only done a handful of races, has been successful, but he hasn't been here all year, so he's not at the sharp end of the championship. But his Korean teammate most certainly is. Roland Bruins, aka MG Choi, lead their car leading the race. Their car stretching to here, 3.2 seconds. Further ahead, I said it go out by half a second. It went out for maybe by maybe slightly more. Marcus Gomez is still all over the tail of Hampre, but it's the Indigo Racing Mercedes. Slight sponsorship on board. Many sponsors guests this weekend here occupying the, the suites, and they've got a oh, sweet, sweet success to look at because the clock is counting down just over 10 minutes remaining. The second and third, you can see dropping back all the time. Still the Porsche of Hampre in second place, and Marcos Gomez, welcome to the championship. Uh, looking for a podium at his first attempt. In the background, Rahel Frey still holding on to fourth place overall. The 912 Porsche tucked in behind Leo Yi Hong Lee. Then comes Martin Rump, and I, I fancy his, his Rump quicker. Well, the fastest driver out there, you don't have to look far. It's Shane Van Gisbergen, eighth and closing all the time. I don't think he's going to be able to catch the 918 Porsche to, to get any higher than eighth, but fastest lap. Two minutes, 8.4. A lot of drivers would have given their right arm to get that in qualifying. Most of them have given the equivalent of weight in their right arm. <laughs> They've lost a lot of perspiration, a lot of fluids during this race. Bruce, I I'm very grateful to the drivers that spoke to us because they all look absolutely spent when they came out of their cars just now. P2 and P3 on our screens, so no wonder it's Philip Humphrey. Three, 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 three and a half seconds now because Marcus Gomez in the in the hub water course Ferrari all behind him. When I say behind, I mean inside, going ahead. I didn't know the move was going to be made there. Very, very tight, turn, turn six, and then just doing a fabulous job to do so. So the pace was with the Brazilian, and now let's see. Hamprecht, well, I just wonder, I'm not even sure you saw the move. I think you'd headed up to the pit lane when uh, poor old Hamprecht, well, in fact, he was still up in the pit lane when Hamprecht lost the lead. He got behind a GT4 class runner, guessed the wrong way, had to come off the pad, sweep around the outside with Manuel Mesk. But let's take a look at the replay, especially for Steve Dawson. Thank you. Here we are, and it's, this is, this no, is the change of, sorry, this is the change of... Uh, third becoming second but it was at the same point on the circuit where poor old Hamprecht lost out and this time he was uh, minding his own business but clearly the life in those tyres has, has gone away there I was saying that the, the Ferrari in the first part of the race looked so it was eating its tyres but with a new driver on board Marcus Gomez making the best of the rubber now he's uh, well he's not going to be able to surely with eight and a half minutes remaining to close three and a half seconds on the race leader in fact it's probably more than that because the undertaking manoeuvre would have cost him time you can see Hamprecht is struggling even to keep the car on the circuit at various points towards the end of the day. And the leader in the GT3 and class and doing so easily after drive-through penalty for their rival uh, Vitana Motorsport car is the 51 Lamborghini. Ben Porter at the wheel. That's the car from AMAC Motorsport looking for their third class win of 2019. Four minutes remaining in this one-hour race. The first of the two one-hour races on the series inaugural visit to the Korea international circuit and uh, make it look very easy indeed Manuel Metzger I really thought uh, that Philip Pamprecht would have the answers he most certainly doesn't the Mercedes from Indigo Racing is looking absolutely fantastic in the closing stage of the races it would be no shame if Marcos Gomez closes in very slightly but actually last time around a tenth of a second gained by the race leader so the Ferrari was homing in by a small amount was never going to be able to get close enough and right now it looks like the battle is all but won Mercedes, the background of the shot, they go out of turn two, up the sloping straight to the turn three hairpin. You can see the top three runners in it, but unfortunately for the Porsche fans, Philip Hamprecht muscled out of the race lead and he's fallen back, not just a second, back to third. And if anything, I'd suggest that Rahel Frey, look at the last lap time though, very, very similar, running in fourth, matching, if not yet quite passing him, but Leo Yi Hong Lee closing it as well. And in GT4, it's Craft Bamboo Racing. 
leading the way, Richard Wee. How big is his advantage? Three and a half seconds. I thought the challenge from Seti Juan Santosa would close in, but uh, the driver from Singapore has settled down very nicely indeed. There he is, Craft Bamboo Racing, racing in both of the classes. Three cars in GT3, one in GT4. And uh, it's the one that's at the very sharp end of that field. And uh, looking at respective lap times here, yeah, the closing stage of the racing class. It's all very much under control by Richard Wee. Likewise, Manuel Metzger, who is really, doesn't care if he's got rubber on his tyres, he's really getting that tail out and pushing very hard. Two and a half minutes remaining. Steve, you probably may need to consider nipping back to where from where you've just come. I think I'll bid you adieu. Yes, I'll do that. See you apart from me. Thanks very much. Steve Dawson doing a fabulous job in the pits and in the commentary box. I'm the one that stays in the air conditioning. Just lucky like that. Really. So Manuel Metzger leading the way for Indigo Racing. Marcus Gomez giving chase but not catching in the Hub Auto Corsa Ferrari. Third place, the car that got into the lead of the race on the opening round. Championship leaders, but for no longer because... As we approach the final lap of the race, Philip Hattrick back in third position. And his, he started six points ahead. Oh, Bruins, but 25 and only 15 for second place. Do the maths. Championship lead is going to change. It will be a four-point lead. Minus six will turn to top ten. And so on to the final lap. It's a long lap here. 5.615 kilometres. This the final lap. So for Manuel Metzger. He can relax, he's got a GT4 runner between himself and the Ferrari that's in second place. The Ferrari with Marcus Gomez, the Brazilian racer, making his championship debut, dives up the inside. And unfortunately, bodywork rubbing for the GTO racing number 11. GT4 runner just lost a position there. Oh dear, that's really bad luck for Tony Vaughan. So that will drop that back down the order. No problems at all and none wished. The German racer in the German car shared with the Korean racer the new championship leaders they will be if this lap can be completed past the dummy pits, well, the, the national racing pits, up towards turn four and then into the sequence after a couple of tight corners, the wonderful sequence of sweepers that brings the cars through the second third of this lap. Second place, Marcus Gomez closed the gap last time around to 3.699 seconds, won't be able to haul it down much more than that, won't be able to gain another position, but uh, welcome to the championship, Marcus, and all that form that's been so strong in Belgium, today, in Brazilian stock cars over the last decade or so, clearly translates very nicely indeed into driving a Ferrari super quickly, not as fast as Shane Van Gisbergen is making that 888, Mercedes goes still in eighth position overall, just banging yet another fastest lap of the race, but right now it's all eyes on the car, started by Rolof Bruins, the Korean racer who spent his racing childhood in the Netherlands and uh, since has returned here and is really getting things very right indeed. A huge fillip at the end of last year with their first win for Indigo Racing and this year the crew with its Mercedes has looked very good indeed, has scored points in every single outing and that's what you need in this championship if you want to be at the sharp end of the championship table. I feared when Metzger set off on this opening, in the second stint, his opening few laps were very, very hectic on the wheel, really pushing that Mercedes hard, but he knows much more than I do, and that car has flown beautifully. There it is, through the final corner, up to the chequered flag, and that's win number three for this year for Indigo Racing. Cue delight down the pit lane, and I'm sure that uh, Rob Bruins will be heading up towards the podium right now with a massive smile on his face as the new championship leader. For this man, Manuel Metzger, who's immediately leading the chase. He looks as though it was job done after the pit stops, but not only did he catch Philippe Amprey's Porsche when it had quite a nice little lead, but uh, you can hear the cheers. Home ground, victory. So Manuel Metzger will be popping those belts and uh, getting out of the, the oven, which is a racing cockpit here in such hot and humid conditions. And, uh, well, you know, he might even have the audacity to look cool, but for Manuel Metzger, oh yes, oh yes indeed. Absolute delight for the German. And where is his Korean co-driver, who's at least had a, around half an hour to cool down, but uh, probably to the tension that uh, Roloff Bruins was experiencing down in the pit lane, hoping and praying his car could go from second into first. It did just that. Of course, we have to talk to Roloff first while Manuel just entered the car. You said it was a dream, and the dream came true in front of your home fans. What a great start to the weekend. Yeah, in short, he did it. He did it. <laughs> what a drive. I mean, amazing. To win here, like... Couldn't be better. Yeah, it was uh, tough. I wanted to catch up. What I lost in the pit stop, I went out a bit too late. That was my mistake. So I wanted to make it up. 
and then Philip had a bit of bad luck in traffic. I, I saw the, I saw coming what was happening, so I guessed for that direction and it was the right direction. Then I could pass, and I know sector three, sector uh, sector two, sector three. We are quicker. I have to pull a gap for sector one because they are quicker there, and I had the gap, and then I could pull off. And uh, yeah, just amazing to win here. Well, you don't have to listen to their joy. You can see it as well. Great, great racing to take them to the front of the race. Slightly subdued third step of the podium for Tanart Sati and Thirikul, who did such a good job to take the lead and stay there. But Philippe Hamprey caught out in traffic. Nothing he could do thereafter. But uh, right now, it's the joy unbounded for particularly Roloff Bruins, the Korean racer at home. But for Manuel Metzger, who's shared some of the races with him, They've won before and they've won. This is their most important win together. This is the one that puts them into the championship lead. Some great racing on a circuit that really does encourage great racing and I'm sure everybody enjoying it. All they want tomorrow is a slightly cooler race. All we want tomorrow is more of the same. Welcome to the Korea International Circuit, former home of the Korean Grand Prix. A great circuit for racing. We really enjoyed the action yesterday. Air temperature 34 degrees. Both of those temperatures will rise through the course of the race. Humidity, much as it was, 57%. But I tell you, if you're here in Korea, it really doesn't feel like that. It feels way, way more. It's very, very hot and very sticky indeed. Steve is down on the grid with uh, Manuel Metzger, who brought home the winning car yesterday that he shares with Roloff Bruins. Yeah, Manuel, super day yesterday. You got that 15-second success penalty, though, today. Big problem? Yeah, we will see. Um, I will... Uh my plan is to have a good start, uh, to keep up front with Shane and the other fast guys, to create a bit of a gap, because our championship contenders they also have a penalty of 5 and 10 seconds, um, so it's just a matter of, have a, do I have a gap or not, so that's the plan, to create some gap. Couple of quick cars ahead of you, what's the race to the first corner going to be like? Yeah, just follow Shane and uh, hope that nobody from behind does stupid stuff, also in the second and the third corner. Um, yeah, I, I just want to keep uh, the car in one piece and keep safe and uh, I want to avoid any trouble. Be safe, thank you. Thank you. On pole position we've got uh, Shane Van Gisbergen on the 888 Mercedes alongside we have uh, Alexander Imperatori. It looks like a tidy start. Frankie Chen Kong Fu trying to blast up the middle there in the metallic blue Audi but uh, has the net well you've got to have the inside line to turn one and the Mercedes did just that but a uh, good line around the outside from Imperatory but unfortunately oh dearie me Maxi got joined the championship he's been spun around we'll have a look at the replay to see did he jump or was he pushed but of course trying to gain positions to pick up uh, speed down to the first corner looks so the Porsche is in ahead but it's a right hander at the end of the uh, coming up to the turn three yeah the Porsche is in front oh big big twitch from Imperatori trying to get the braking done has he left it too late yes he has he's gone off the circuit so Shane Van Kisbergen really quite a lot in fact quite a lot lot off the circuit that gives a chance uh, for those behind to make the moves and it certainly looked as though uh, one of the uh, Leo Yihong Lee is right in the mix you can see the green flashes on his uh, charcoal grey Porsche did not take the lead, but that was a uh, trying to throw it away. And I'm trying to see if there's a mark on the back of, yeah, looks like there's been a clout on the back of Imperatori's Porsche, but somehow, just somehow, including that little after Sunday afternoon drive across the countryside, Shane Beck is broken back into the lead. As they now go into the sequence of S's, very, very hard to overtake here, but uh, those, those were two drivers, and Steve Joy Dawson rejoins me, looking remarkably fresh, having been up in the temple high temple on the grid. Looks like the first two drivers have thrown it away, Steve. Just as you came into the commentary booth, but somehow they're still in front. Well, if you're in Korea, you might as well have a look around while you're here, and they certainly did that. It was very, very tight, wasn't it? The first few series of corners, these cars bunched up together. It almost seemed inevitable that something would happen there. And right, let's run down the top ten. We've seen Frederick Schandoffer uh, pushing Leo Yi Hong Lee for fourth place. Marcus Gomez going very well, but not quite catching them. The last few laps, Schandoffer in the lap beginning, he's escaped from that number 27 Ferrari, but Marcus Gomez resilient stock car racing star but also very handy in a GT3 car he's helping mix the championship up though because he's ahead of Manuel Metzger in that 97 Indigo racing Mercedes Chris van der Drift tucked in behind in seventh place overall Martin Rump in the number 12 Audi in eighth Darlo Young traditionally in the top 10 there he is again in the 99 Craft Bamboo racing Mercedes and three up the rear of the top 10 in 13th place overall just a little bit down the group looking at now they're fighting over sixth and seventh position is Frankie Chen Kong Fu, but he is under investigation for what happened at Turn 1 on the opening lap. Chris van der Drift's had a fairly quiet weekend so far. He's about five tenths behind Metzger at the moment, so something for him to chase. Currently in seventh, looking to move up to sixth and fifth. 
Well, it's always useful having spies in the pit lane and news about the 911 Porsche from Absent Racing, the car that came here as the championship leader. Suspected gearbox problem down on the grid, so they took it off the grid into the pit lane so they could have a little look. Probably hit it with a hammer and sent Philip Pamprecht back into the race. He started stone last from pit exit, up to 16th place overall. And he and Maxi Gertz in the 88 Craft Bamboo Racing Mercedes that was spun at the first corner, 16th and 17th overall. <coughs> They've got a group of cars up ahead of them they should be able to pick off. Next first target will be Melvin Moe in the third of the Craft Bamboo Racing Mercedes. Bruce, it's a massive blow for Philip Hamprecht and for Sutton and Tyrrell. I'll see if I can have a word with them at the halfway mark. They came into the weekend championship lead has since been overtaken by Roloff Bruins, but uh, now that gap looking like it might get a little bit bigger. Well, let's go back to GT4. The order hasn't changed. It's still Takeyuki Kinoshita leading the BMW Jochi, still ahead of Seti Juan Santoso. Whatever the problem was for Santoso, it seems to have sorted itself out. Having been second in the class behind the BMW, he's gone back behind his teammates. So the green bonnet on the Mercedes is now in front of the yellow, and that means Jochi is ahead of Santoso. But you can see Santoso is, what, half a second down as they go up towards the turn three hairpin. Whether it was a gear change problem, whatever it was, he lost not just track position, he lost time and track position. He's down to third in class, but uh, not letting it go as the Indonesian racer chasing very, very hard indeed. And in fact, you can see he's got a little bit more speed. Now they're young in the walls, much as his teammate Christina Nielsen was yesterday when she was uh, pushed into a shove by the McLaren. Running behind the McLaren today, but uh, position just being lost there by Darrell o Young as 9-11 gains another position. So Philip Hamprey, wrong in traffic yesterday. Bumps. Now he's finding out what it's like to drive in rush hour. Here, Korea and start giving a little bit of a nudge at it. Certainly, we've noticed uh, traffic lights don't mean quite the same here in South Korea <laughs> as they do around much of the else the world. We tend to stop on <laughs> stop on red and go on green. We're not quite sure what the code is here. It's very confusing. It must be a little bit confusing for anyone trying to keep track of the order of the cars there in the midfield as they brush up more dust. It's hectic stuff and great racing here. Well, what we're seeing is Maxi Gertz, Craft Bamboo Racing, in the middle of our screen, on the right of our screen, with many, many twitches there. <laughs> Loads of dust on his tyres is Darrell O. Young and German racer Maxi Gertz race, races all around the world for Mercedes and uh, showed his extra craft, but it was Darlow Young was very busy getting past the GT4 runners and didn't exactly stay on the circuit. Then he had a big twitch and Maxi Gertz did not need a second invitation and uh, has moved up another position. So the top 10 beckons, not there yet, not there yet for the 911 Porsche, but uh, Philip Pamprecht, as we saw, gaining positions and Maxi Gertz doing likewise. Pit windows open, Bruce. I'm just wondering what Tanat Satyan Tirikul is thinking. There is an opportunity to perhaps make one more place up, only about three tenths between his car and Sawa ahead of him, but after that, it's over 11 seconds, and this is going to be a real uphill struggle. Remember, championship leaders coming into this weekend, and this is a big, big dent in their championship hopes. I'll take a trip back down to the pits, see what we can uncover. Well, we can't keep you away, must, must be uh, said. The, the lure of the pit lane, the glamour of the pit lane, not necessarily the heat and the humidity, but off goes Steve Dawson. And off goes Shane Van Gisbergen, best part of nine seconds clear last time around. Oh, first warning for one of the drivers, Martin Rump running eighth overall. Watch out, track limits being exceeded, but that's the first warning. They get plenty of those. By the time you get to three, you've got to start considering your options. Number 12, back out onto the track. Where on Tan, and of course 911 held for those extra five seconds. He did come in behind the number 12. Now he's several positions behind, but uh, will lose more positions potentially for that longer pit stop. Still out, still running in second place. Alexander Imperatory going to be probably the next, next closest thing to 10 seconds down on race leader Shane Van Gisbergen. And let's see what the gap is. We've had much worse. 11 seconds down. The last lap he lost 1.1 seconds to the race leader. But sitting on a gap of 3.4 seconds over Frederick Chandoff and Vincenzo Sospiri racing on Lamborghini. Looking there, the red, white, blue, half bamboo racing number 88 Mercedes. How high has that risen? It's up to 13th place overall. Will rise a few more because that hasn't come in to make its pit stop. But Takeuki Kinoshita now out of the car, strapping his good friend Tanaka Jakuchu on board. Cool, calm and collected. Well, as cool and calm as you can be in temperatures of 36 degrees. And that's out of the cockpit. now on board the 97 Mercedes from Indigo Racing. Don't forget, he came here six points down on the championship leading crew of this car, the 911 Porsche of Tanar, Satya Thirikul and Philip Hamprecht. Took victory yesterday, less than a minute remaining on the clock. Coming up to that uh, 
series of S's has to be in before it says 25 minutes at the top of the clock. Sweeping through the penultimate corner, he's slowed, diving into the pit entry, done the job almost to perfection. I'm not, I'm not just talking about getting the car in before the pit window closes, I'm talking, there we are, he's now into the pit lane over that white line that marks slowing down. That is official pit entry, job has been done. Handing over to Jeffrey Ibrahim, the Prince of Johor, could he be heading, he took his first victory in Pro-Am yesterday in uh, seventh place overall, could he be heading for the top step of the podium overall? It's a massive, massive arc, a huge challenge, but he's someone who really has embraced the challenges in this his inaugural season of international competition. And if he was happy yesterday, he would be exploding with delight if he can get any of those top three positions at the end of the race. It would be a huge, huge achievement. Alison Peritori into the pits from second place, came in 14 seconds down. That is one heck of a drive in the opening, just over half of the race from Shane Van Gisbergen. Defended from Imperatory in turn one, turn three, and then uh, somehow both of them rejoined the circuit and managed to get back ahead or stay just in front of Leo Yi Hong Lee to then be in first and second positions all over again. It was hairy on that opening lap, but every we've got a car has pulled to the side of the circuit, now got going again. I don't know if it was a spinner out of turn one, it was a the Ferrari be the Hummels O'Cors of Ferrari now in the hands of Yuya Sakamoto. I'll see if I can pick that up. See, it was distant in the shot, didn't see the incident. No, it's the Lamborghini and it's not driving in a straight line at all. Alex Al, third position, he was on his outlap, came out of the pit lane. Oh dearie me, talking coming out of the pit lane, this is the car that came in from the lead of the race, now in the hands of Jeffrey Ibrahim. The Prince of Johor, the bright silver metallic Mercedes. Is this going to be heading for a first overall win? Well, the car that was possibly heading for third place is heading nowhere fast and nowhere in a straight line. Alex Al, how unfortunate. Really strong opening stint from his teammate. Uh, Frederick Schandorf started in seventh place and came up to third. Well, there was a little bit of uh, help there. And it looks like it's the number one. Now we see what's happening in, in the replay. It looks like it's the number 12 Audi that went up the inside of it. Uh, I'm not sure, well, I'm not sure that, that uh, any blame can be attached to the Lamborghini driver there. Well, let's take a look at the Prince of Johor, Jeffrey Ibrahim, trying to keep it nice and neat and tidy, trying to keep the tyre sweep, sweeping through the penultimate corner into the final corner, which is just a left flick onto the short start finish straight. The Lamborghini that was given that hit has come back into the pits, but clearly the steering was broken by the contact. So Alex Al one has been adjudged the innocent party and the driver of the number 12 Audi that hit it. The guy aware on tan, very early in his stint, unfortunately just in his desperation to gain position and ground. In GT4, Sonaka Jukuchu took over from Takeyuki Kinoshita. That is the 99 GT3 class, Prop Ambi Racing Mercedes pull ahead, no difficulty in doing that. The GT3 car is a good dozen seconds faster per lap. But importantly for Sonaka Jukuchu, with the 111 Mercedes, the challenger from Team I Race. Win, having to serve a drive-through penalty. That's dropped that one down to the tail end. It's fifth position in the class in GT4. But leading the class, the BMW team Studi. Entry, Jakuchu leading the race. Still the tri triple eight Mercedes, but being pushed very hard indeed. The lead's about to change, surely, on this lap up to turn one, snaking. Looking up the inside, Vuta got in through Fuversang. In fact, the tie driver made a mess of that. Break too deep into the corner, couldn't get the braking done. Affords a little bit of an advantage. The gap on the start finish line, 0 0.382 of a second. But Ibrahim has been bought a little bit of breathing space. I'm not sure he can keep on in the lead for the whole of the race. The gap about two. In fact, last lap he was three seconds down, but he's gained three seconds slower than the car that's chasing. That's why the 918 Porsche is able to close in at will. This is the Panther AAS Motorsport Porsche entered by Absolute Racing, meaning they're a very busy crew. Lights are flashing from 918. Jeffrey Ibrahim not being phased, leading a race. The clock counting down under 12 minutes to go, but lapping two to three seconds a lap, slower than the car that's chasing. He's surely on borrowed time, a little bit deep through the exit of turn four, gets it right for turn five. Once you turn through turn six, the tight left hander, I was going to say, if you're in front there, you'll lead all the way through the S's. And Jeffrey Hibbin trying to fight back, but that was very, very positive from Futakon into Fubasak. He's taken the lead of the race, and through the S's, it's almost impossible to overtake. Maybe it's a chance for 
Jeffrey Ibrahim to take a look at the more experienced tie racer, Chuck Mayen, learn from his lines through the sweepers. But then again, he's driving a Mercedes, which tends to be better through the sweepers. The first part of the lap is where the Porsche seems to have an advantage. Balanced performance should keep their lap times really pretty equal, and that's always been a strong feature of SRO Racing Championships. But you don't need a stopwatch to see that now in the lead of the race, Fuji Cornet and Fubasang is pulling clear at ease. So the important gap is the gap behind the Triple Eight Racing Mercedes. In the background, you can always see, already see the car in third place. Anthony Liu joined the championship this weekend, sharing with Chris van der Drift. Chris brought the car in from about sixth or seventh positions before the pit stop, but the JRM Porsche is a coming. It could be a Porsche 1-2 running wide towards the end of the lap. Goes Futicor, goes, goes the car in second place. Jeffrey still on the track, but still being hunted and closed in on by Anthony Liu. And Wambo not too far behind. We could have a Porsche 1, 2, 3 within the next couple of laps. But for now, lights are flashing. The top three cars come through. Top four in picture, the fifth place Ferrari. Yuya Sakamoto in the background of the picture. And right behind him, championship leader. Just getting a first chance to see his race stint. Roloff Bruin, sixth place overall. He's catching Sakamoto, who's catching Bo, who's catching Liu. That's how it goes. Everybody catching Jeffrey Ibrahim. Does look as though a dream overall podium is going to be taken from his grasp in the remaining 10 minutes of this race. But we've seen already Jeffrey of him made a very stern stuff indeed against these far more experienced drivers. You can see Wan in the background getting closer to the second and third place battle. See the green flashes on his wings. Wan Bo last time around. Yeah, was fast. In, the th in fact, all the cars ahead of him bar the race leader. But second place has been seeded. Caution has been the byword. Can Anthony Liu get it back onto the track out of turn three? Yes, he can. Now, Wan Bo is trying to make it a Porsche. One, two, three. Jeffrey Ibrahim, Ibrahim looking better exit from turn three, so he's a bit quicker as they go up towards turn four, but the Porsches do seem very handy in a straight line. Up to turn four they go. Jeffrey Ibrahim trying to fight back. That's good to see this level of fight in him. A little long Wan Bo trying to see if he can get close enough to take a crack, move up into a podium position. Just to let you know, at the moment, the top three cars are all Pro-Am runners. Wan Bo is the top Pro-Pro lineup. What's the car? 9.12, we started on Steve, Steve back. Nice cool afternoon stroll from the pit lane. Yeah, delightful, Bruce. I just spent a bit of time in Jeffrey Overhint's uh, pit garage there. They're all crowded around their monitors. Uh, they were looking uh, very, very carefully at what was going on. And uh, obviously, with great interest, lots of tension down there. It's a lot of pressure for an inexperienced driver, comparatively so, but he's, he's handled it pretty well, hasn't he? Let's be fair. I think Indra Fufusak has got enough in hand. He's got this lap and the next one, but certainly closing all the time, but maybe by not quite enough, is Anthony Liu. Wambo, we saw last time around, moved up to third overall, pushing Jeffrey Ibrahim off the overall podium, but still heading for his best results overall in fourth place. Steve can't tear himself away. He wants to check if there are going to be any place changes. I'm not going to tell him before he makes the walk up towards the podium. Oh, now for Jeffrey Ibrahim, first became second, second became third, third became fourth. And uh, with Yuya Sakamoto and Roloff Bruins in behind, he might go down to sixth place. But Bruins and Sakamoto fighting position so hard they might take each other off. This, with two and a bit minutes remaining on the clock, could be just the gap that's required. There was no gap. I wasn't talking about that. That was Bruins coming up the inside using the shoulders of his Indigo Racing Mercedes. Up into fifth overall, nearly took the Ferrari off, but uh, it was more of a rub than a than a thump, so Sakamoto back down to sixth overall. Roloff Bruins revelling of being on home ground and now has got uh, another Mercedes in front of him. And he's got Ibrahim in his sights. And I'm afraid for Ibrahim, he's on borrowed time at this point because you can see Bruins is uh, just looking very, very aggressive indeed out there. He doesn't just think he's going to pass, he expects to go past. So on to what should be the final lap of the race. This now is the, the final lap, Porsche. final lap. Okay, confirmation this is indeed the final lap of the race. So Vitor Gornit through Fuversack, 1.799 seconds to the good over Anthony Liu. And for Anthony Liu, what a, what a great debut for him for the JRM Motorsport team. We'll be helping it towards its best result of the season. In fact, the best result of the season has been the fifth so far, so they'll be welcoming him with open arms. But for Vitor Gornit through Fuversack, you can just see the GTO racing Mercedes up in front of it, the metallic blue car. That shouldn't trouble it. <laughs> for Anthony Liu taking the very, very wide, wide line. And he realises the race is run for him. He will get that second place for JRM, but uh, it will be victory for the Panther AAS Motorsport Porsche, unless something really untoward occurs. Now the 911 
Porsche came here as the championship leader, heading for the points in eighth place. Tanner Pass sat in Thirical, no dream result, particularly as uh, championship challenger Rolof Bruins has just moved up to fifth, but he may lose eighth place overall because Ware and Tan is fighting back. Of course, Ware has got to look at himself and go, I came into this into my second stint in this race, the second stint, and was uh, hoping for overall victory, but a drive through penalty for assaulting. Uh, Vincenzo Suspiri Motorsports Lamborghini has dropped him down to ninth in terms of sheer pace. He should have been on the podium, possibly the, even the overall victor. And for Jeffrey Ibrahim, he's lost position on this lap to roll off Bruins already. We saw that. And now Yuya Sakamoto trying to push him down to sink overall. But for Butigorn and for Fubasak, he's taking the turn to be the top driver today from Thailand. It's frequently been Sathi and Thirical, but. Uh, Well, I've just heard that 97, you know the number, we know the name, Roloff Bruins under investigation for the contact with the Ferrari when he muscled his way past. This could be a championship changing situation. As it is, he's going to stretch his advantage if he's allowed to keep that fifth position over the 911 crew with uh, Sati and Thirical bringing it home. But uh, talking of bringing it home, here comes Vuticorn in for a Fuversack. Fabulous, fabulous run. Second win for him this season. Winning the Pro-Am class for good measure. Tucked in behind just 1.2 seconds to the good over Anthony Liu. It's a Porsche 1-2-3. Roloff Bruins moves up to fourth place. Jeffrey Ibrahim, unfortunately, will be down in sixth because uh, Vutikorn and well, Sakamoto crossed the line behind him. So Sakamoto did not make the move I expected in the final half of a lap. Apology for demoting him when he didn't deserve to be. But a uh, great win there for the 918 Porsche crew. Vutikorn and Fuversak uh, finishing the job that was started from the grid by his teammate Alexander Imperatori. Uh, it's been a busy, busy day at the office for every single one of the drivers out there. Let's go down to Steve Dawson because he's with our race winners, Vuticorn in Trafuvasak. Yeah, great celebrations here at Vuticorn. You look uh, exhausted. It must have been very hard work. Tell me about it. Was it just a question of biding your time? Yeah, it was pretty much like that because I don't know who was behind me and the guy, I mean, the team didn't want to tell me who it was. So, you know, I just keep pushing like hell. I know that uh, the guy was catching up. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> Alexandre, you did a great job. What was it like watching in the garage? I was a bit nerve wracking, to be honest. Uh, we thought it was safe, but you never know because at the end there were a few GT4s in there and you can easily lose two, three seconds in traffic if you catch it in the wrong places. So we were a bit... Uh, Nervous, I was biting my nails and I really couldn't watch at the end. So, but he did a great job, brought it home, you know, didn't make any mistakes at the end and uh, it's well deserved. Let's take a look at the results. The second of the two races here at the Korea International Circuit. And there we have Porsches in the top three positions. Alexander Imperatori starting from the outside the front row, handing over to Vutikorn into Fuversack, who did the rest. Chris van der Drift handed over to Anthony Liu, and Anthony got closer and closer, 1.2 seconds down at the end of the race. And Wan Bo building on a great start by Leo Yi Hong Lee, third place for them. Manuel Metzger and Roloff Bruins, fourth overall, but under investigation, so Bruins move on Yuya Sakamoto at the end of the race. But uh, fifth place overall, started from pole in the hands of Shane Van Gisbergen and the Prince of Johor, Jeffrey Ibrahim, brought it home in fifth. He did lead the race after the pit stops, but couldn't resist the far more experienced drivers, but showed he really is made of uh, strong stuff to resist the challenge, particularly on the final lap of Yuya Sakamoto. So fifth position for him, the Ferrari crew in sixth overall. Overall winner in the race was also Pro-Am winner there, as you can see in the black background to their numbers. JRM also in the Pro-Am class. So the top three crews going up into the top step. You can see the delight on Chris van der Drift's face. Best result until now was a fifth, now a second, looking very strong indeed. But the winners, Panther AAS Motorsport on the very top step. And all podiums are sweet, all trophies sweeter still, and particularly when the drivers have had to work so hard on a circuit that really, really challenged them. Uh, but really, the temperatures, the humidity today, you can see on the face of Wampo, <laughs> he's going to sleep for some while after this one. But third place, really, really good result for the Absolute Racing Porsche crew. They've had a second place early this season, but they're scoring consistent points, not enough to challenge the championship leaders, but uh, certainly good to be in the mix. JRM Motorsport, the Chinese Porsche team on the left-hand step of the podium. Anthony Liu joined them this weekend, and he's really, really made a big splash alongside Chris van der Drift. You can see the bearded Kiwi smiling away. It's on the top step, Vutikorn into Fuversack and Alex Imperatori. Finally on this, after three very hot and humid days, 
they can uh, relax and release those tensions. But uh, job very well done. They've got to do it all over again for our final round at the end of September in Shanghai. That's it from me, Bruce Jones. Join us in September.